Hello? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Um, okay, my question is, because now Gen Y all expires work-life balance, so, but seems like longer working hours, like, um, we are to show our, I uh, mean like, longer working hours will show to our employers that we are more dedicated and committed to them. Like, for example, for, as a L audit associate, like for year ones, so we are expected to look long work, uh, very long uh, hours. So how can we breach this expectation gap? I'm sorry, um, where did you say the gap is? Like, you know, because we are promoting work-life balance, but we are expected to work long hours. So how do we breach this expectation gap? Like, actually, maybe we can work uh, shorter hours, but actually we are still very efficient. I think this is not just a problem of Gen Y because it's the problem of many and many other generations, including mine as well. And I'm trying to get that work-life balance all the time. So uh, I think it's to manage your employer's expectation rather than manage your own. Because if you can win the trust and the manage the expectation of your employers as well as to constantly prove that you could work smart and efficient and you can deliver I don't see why you can't have the work-life balance. I think the problem is that sometimes you think that staying in the office and be present and while seeing you sitting there means that, wow, wow, you're working really hard. But uh, honestly speaking, it's KPI-driven and it's about delivering the results. So I had a chance to run a, manage a CDC today, a community development council today that we have you know, CDC officers who are very much civil servants and um, I actually turned it to, into a different culture. And I told the staff that they can work from home and don't have to show up in the office as long as they meet their targets. It's totally mind-boggling for them because they have never experienced that. But so far, I've been on a job. Nobody sacked me yet. So it seems to work. And uh, we've been delivering quite a few things, quite a few different projects because I think that trust is needed. So you have to manage your expectation both sides, employers and yourself. And you need to win that trust as you move on. It's about getting that confidence from your employer and or your superior to be able to reach that level. I always believe that it's up to you and uh, whether, you have in, whether you're in an environment that actually encourages that as well. If it doesn't and you still strive for that work-life balance and you think it's not worth it to spend that long hours, then you have to decide for yourself. You either walk or you stay, then you have, to, you have to make that decision. There are some who might, might fear, though, that um, trying to strike this work-life balance might make it seem as if you are not the exemplary worker, although you may meet your KPIs, but I mean, I know it myself because a company I know <laughs> has your um, work performance grading uh, up to good would be always or occasionally you know, meet expectations and you have very good would be occasionally exceeds expectations and then to be in the highest tier you have to be always exceeding expectations and it seems that employee expectations might have been ramped up by perhaps I don't know Gen Xers or baby boomers that you know there are those who may dedicate their entire lives 24-7 um, to work whereas like, if a Gen Y doesn't want to do that it doesn't necessarily mean they're less loyal or less dedicated just that they want to have a but life. it's not about loyalty that they get ahead in career it's about how you deliver it and whether you deliver the results honestly speaking is that you first, you have to set your budget or your targets right up front that you think you can achieve it. So that has to be agreed on both sides between your superior and yourself. And if you're, over, if you're overly ambitious and set too high a target, of course you're going to work 24 by 7 and you may not even achieve it. So how do you manage your expectation? How do you communicate that? So at the beginning of the year when you set your objective, your business target and including your budget, that's where that, that negotiation and discussion with your employer or your boss comes in. And you have to set in such a way that you think you can have the work-life balance as well as your boss can accept. Most of the time, it's difficult. I work for American companies all my life, 15, 16 years. And I, I run the American outfit by the seventh year of my work. And it's always that I, I needed work-life balance because I, I still want to continue to do my races and all that, you know, running races and all. So I set a target where I thought that I can achieve it uh, reasonably, comfortably, and I will be able to do that before end of the year. And I, I strive for it. I work really hard in the first, second quarter. And by the third quarter, I know that I actually will be able to achieve the target for the rest of the year. Then I take 
uh, slightly, uh, I'll take a little break here and there. So it is about you managing it and you able to bring it up and talk about it with your employer as well. It may not be easy for the most junior staff because sometimes they think that they do not have the say and you know, uh, they, they don't carry weight in whatever they say. But you should try. You put it diplomatically and professionally, I think it's possible.